thought I would make a quick video about these ignition switches and PTO switches that you have on a lot of lawn tractors. Uh, I have a Husqvarna and a Craftsman here at the moment, but all these parts are the same. They work the same way. They're interchangeable. And um, I thought I would go a little bit over this. Uh, I know there's a lot of videos out there on the internet about these, so I don't know that I'm bringing anything brand new to the table, but some of them are a little too vague for my taste. Some of them are a little too detailed, so maybe I'll hit a sweet spot, which is helpful for you. All right, first thing is uh, ignition switch. It does a couple things. It turns the engine off when we want to turn it off, and it does that by grounding out the ignition coil and killing the spark plug. It, um, when you have the key on, it does several things. It uh, sends power to the ignition coil so you get spark. It sends power to the headlights. It sends power to the hour meter so that you can kind of keep track. You know, you don't keep track of miles uh, on a lawn track, you keep track of hours. And then um, in the run position, excuse me, in the start position, which is uh, spring-loaded, you can't stay there, it basically runs the engine, but it also engages the starter. So that's what's sort of new. So on the back side, you have a G terminal for ground, B terminal for battery positive. Then you have S for starter, M for, I'm guessing is magneto, which is a sort of an older term for ignition coil. And then you have A1, A2, and E. Now, before the ignition, the ignition switch is laid out in a way where before it'll send power to the starter, uh, it wants to make sure a few things are happening. For one, it wants to make sure that you have the clutch pu pushed in. It wants to make sure that you're sitting in the seat and it wants to make sure that the blades are not engaged. So that's three, what we would call enabling inputs. Basically, if one of those three things is not right, then this is not gonna do its job. So this basically has, you could say five inputs, power, ground, seat position, PTO position, and clutch position. So this, thing, this needs five things in order to send out something on the S terminal for the starter. So that's why you have so many terminals, even though you're doing a relatively simple thing. It's ma mainly because of safety, right? Um, you could start the engine with the PTO engaged, but it's a little bit harder because you have more reciprocating mass and it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, you also don't have to be seated and you don't have to have the clutch in, but modern day litigation and the Sioux culture that we have in the United States has led to all of these extra safety features, which probably have helped some people stay safe. So I'm happy for that. Anyway, that's why you have seven terminals. You actually have 10 wires coming out of the back of these because some of them are spliced because when we send power, as an example, to the headlights, that's also uh, when we send it to, let's say, uh, the hour meter and, um, you know, things like that. So I um, used a multimeter and a wiring diagram that's up there and some notes and just put together this simple um, uh, summary. So basically when we're off, when the key is in the off position, we have ground, oops, sorry, we have ground connected to magneto and A1. So that's because we need to ground out the spark plug, actually the ignition coil so that it, the engine doesn't keep running. That's important. When we're in the run position, we have the battery terminal connected to A1, and we have the E terminal connected to A2. I didn't dig into why that is, uh, so forgive me on that, but um, yeah, I couldn't find the right wiring diagram from my machine. And I didn't look that hard either. I'm just kind of impatient today. So in the start position, we have the B terminal also connected to A1 um, and also connected to S for start. That's because we need the starter motor to get everything started. The next thing I looked at is the PTO switch. So basically this PTO switch is set up like so. This is terminal A, B, and C. These are not exactly labeled. They just say NC, NC, NC. But this is pokey yoke, so you can only install it one way. And, and basically, it's pretty simple. In the off position, so pushed in, the lower row is connected to the upper row. And since there's no pin here, this is doing nothing. So in the off position, we have this connected to this, this connected to this, this is connected to nothing. In the on position, when you pull it, Basically, the middle row connects to the bottom row across the board, all three. So this to this, this to this, this to this. Now the PTO switch, this guy, 
you will see here. And basically, um, in order to engage the starter solenoid, the switch has to be in the off position. Otherwise, it doesn't want to start because the blades are engaged and it's a lot of reciprocating mass. Then you have the electric clutch, which is what engage, basically you send electricity to an electromagnet and the electromagnet pulls a couple pieces of metal together and the blades begin to engage. And then the last one is this operate, operator's presence relay. Now your machine may be different, but generally there's some sort of switch in the seat to make sure that um, someone's still on the machine and that they haven't fallen off, that kind of thing. One little diagnosis test you can do with this thing. It's not a complete test, but with the key on, but the engine off, you can pull and engage this thing and you'll actually hear this electric clutch clicking, those plates clicking together. Now, that only tells you that B, H, and E are okay. I have had these where the switch still sent power from the battery to the clutch, but it wasn't sending power to the solenoid. Or this other switch was damaged so that it thought that the seat, no one was in the seat. So that test doesn't prove to you that this is good, but if you didn't hear that, that would be a good indicator on how to start your diagnosis. So last thing I wanna say is, even though an ignition switch is a relatively simple thing, when you combine a seven wire, 10 wire switch with a eight wire uh, PTO switch, and then you add in sort of the litigation safety factor sort of things, um, it can get complicated relatively fast. And um, if you think about it, this is the table that you would have need to fill out. What are all seven terminals doing under these three different conditions? And that can be kind of intimidating 21 different pieces of information together. But when you actually do the work, you find that it's a relatively simple thing. So my encouragement to you is not to get frustrated because it is very frustrating. Um, I used to work for Volkswagen and I used to work on Phaetons, which have, you know, just, I mean, it's a hundred thousand dollar car with crazy amounts of electronics and cameras and sensors. And even though I've worked on stuff that has 150 or 200 wires coming into the engine control module, this kind of stuff can still frustrate me because you underestimate it. You think like, oh, it's just a lawnmower. How complicated could it be? It's only six wires. It must be a piece of cake. Uh, I've worked on stuff with 200 wires, um, but but it can still really bite you and be, because you, you just sort of assume it'll be simple and things are getting more complicated. And so my encouragement to you is to watch out how you set your expectations because if you approach these things thinking like, oh, it's only two wires or three wires, it must be super simple uh, versus saying, well, let's just see what I can learn about it and find out about it, it can be really frustrating. So yeah, take these things apart, play with them, take some notes, take some readings, look at the wiring diagram. And when you, when you are diagnosing a machine, always try and think about the next machine um, that's gonna come your way. Or if this machine comes back, you know, or if it's your own, if it gives you a problem again, try not just to diagnose the broken wire or the broken terminal or something like that, but, but try and learn something about how these things work, how the systems interact with one another, um, because that'll make you in general more knowledgeable and capable. And that way, when a neighbor calls or an aunt calls and they have a similar machine, you, you have a broader understanding of what it takes to get these machines started and running um, even if you didn't need that knowledge for your own machine so anyway i hope that's helpful to somebody if it's not i understand give it a thumbs down go check out a guy named donny boy he's uh i think he's canadian and he does a uh, really good engine small engine repair videos i've learned a lot from him so if you didn't like this one go check him out take care